I want to honor the uh, strong support that the Institute has received over many years from Senator Tom Harkin. He has a deep concern for the issues that are central to our work, and he helped us sustain our, our focus on the ultimate goal of a National Peace Academy. Senator, if you'd be willing to say a few words. Well, Dick, thank you very much, Dick, and thank you for the great leadership that you have shown at the United States Institute of Peace for so many years. Uh, like Dan and Ted, I remember serving in the House with Spark before he came to the Senate, and then I came to the Senate, and he was working on this idea of a peace academy that you spoke about, Dan. And he was the first one that ever told me this little factoid that I've always remembered that, that, uh, that it was really George Washington who had first proposed a peace academy and in his will uh, George Washington had left some land in perpetuity for the building of a peace academy along the Potomac River. Well it never never came to be but the idea of a peace academy goes clear back to George Washington. And he even spoke about it at the time, or wrote about it at the time, about the need for people trained in the art of diplomacy for this new fledgling nation that we had, and, 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 and uh, trained in the art of establishing peaceful relations with, our, with countries around the world. So the idea goes back a long way, but it was up to Spark and Jennings Randolph, whom I did not know well at all, but I did know Mark Hatfield. And uh, after James got Mark Hatfield was really, again, instrumental along with uh, Spark in getting this through. As you may know, it really started out to be a peace academy along the lines of Air Force, Navy, Army, and that kind of thing. It was going to be an academy where people would actually go to school and learn and train, that type of thing. Uh, that's initially how it kind of came through both the House and the Senate. The administration at that time would not, would not do that. And so the compromise was to establish an institute of peace, a peace institute. And in those early days, in the late 80s, uh, right before Spark passed away, I was privileged, again with the help of Dan Inouye, to become chairman of the appropriations subcommittee that funded it. And uh, one of Spark's last charges to me was, keep it alive. Keep it alive. And so, with the help of Republicans and Democrats through these years, we had some tough times in those early years, too. But we kept alive. We had good people on board in those early days, and we persevered. Uh, they've done a lot of good things, a lot of students who have studied there, and interns, a lot of good papers, a lot of the work they did in the Balkans later on, uh, Dick. Uh, just, just great work that this, this Peace Institute has done. And so, we look back at uh, 20 years, we now are going to have a new place for it, uh, a building to be housed, uh, which will really be, a, a, I think, a, a, a great statement about the stability, about the fact that this is not going to go away. We're going to keep it here. And, uh, and I thank all the board members, past and present, maybe future who are here, I don't know, but the past and present board members who have devoted a lot of time and effort to this. I, I've known many of you over the years and I know that each one of you devoted a lot of time and effort to the Peace Institute as a, as a board member, and I, I deeply want to thank all of you for that. I will close with this. I think we get the wrong idea about peace. Too many people, and I think the popular press, portrays peace as a static time after a war or between wars. There's a war, then you have peace, then you have war, and then you have peace. But I think that's wrong. I think that's the wrong way to look at it. See, peace, I've always thought, is a process, an ongoing process. Just as war is a process by, where, by which we maim and kill and debase our fellow human beings, peace is a process by which we encourage cooperation and understanding 
which we elevate the human spirit and we make more secure people around the globe in their own well-being. So peace is a process. It goes on and on and on, and it never ends. And to that extent, that's why I believe so strongly in what Dick Solomon, what all of you are doing at the Peace Institute. It's not just something that's temporary. It is a process that must continue, because as long as we have a peace process, it diminishes the prospect of a war process. Thank you.